Sangeeta on Mehta Zoo Tech Channel. Um, welcome to this uh, video where we are going to have a discussion on uh, the Indian uh, deep sea fisheries, uh, its prospects and challenges. So before uh, proceeding to the topic, I wish everyone a very happy and uh, prosperous new year 2021. Deep sea fisheries. Its forecast and challenges. So, fisheries play a vital role in the economic expansion of all maritime nations. The fisheries sector contributes as foreign exchange earner ensures nutritional security and generates employment opportunities with absolute rights on the ease that is exclusive economic zone india has also acquired the responsibility to conserve develop and optimally exploit maritime resources up to 200 nautical miles of a coastline the current exploitation from the maritime capture sector is 3.44 million tons in the, in the year 2013 to 14 as against a potential of 4.41 million tons. So as the coastal uh, fishery faces the issues like the sustainability, resources conservation and management, there is an imperative need for finding an alternative resource for the nutritional security. Exploitation of underexploited, non-conventional resources from the distant waters of the Indian is will be the only solution. There is an ample scope of increasing production by venturing into the deeper waters of the East, which holds a potential of 1.7 million tons of underexploited and unexploited uh, fin fishes and shellfishes. This indicates that that is an ample scope of development of the sector. So, um, in this, we are going to uh, discuss in detail about the deep sea fishing, its forecast, and challenges in India. So, um, uh, I want to say, according to uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization, that is FAO, deep sea fisheries are those that take place at greater depths and many deep sea fisheries take place in waters beyond the national jurisdiction such as the exclusive economic zone that is in the high seas. In recent years, the deep sea fishery resources have become the iconic last border for the expansion and front position of marine fisheries. In general, marine living resources caught in the high seas always pose scientific and technical challenges worldwide a number of governmental and non-governmental organization with mandates relating to the conservation of the environment biodiversity and the management of fisheries then expressed the concerns about the likely known or feared consequences of uh, deep sea fishing in terms of its effects and impacts on the target stocks, associated species and habitants. Now we'll talk about the forecast here. Deep sea fisheries over the years has undergone several changes like modernization of fishing practices along with <clears throat> diversification, intensification and extension of fishing to new grounds and landing from incidental by catch to targeted uh, commercial fishery. In India, the coastal fishery sector is now facing challenges like the sustainability, uh, resources conservation and management. Therefore, there is an urgent need for looking forward the unexploited or least exploited resources so as to meet the demand towards the nutritional security of the country as a whole. So, at this juncture, the exploitation of underexploited, non-conventional resources 
from the distant waters of the Indian is is only solution left with us. Now we'll see the challenges. Uh, <coughs> sorry, to develop the sector, the following challenges need to be addressed. So, what are the challenges to be addressed? Lack of awareness among the consumers and low market acceptability. So, uh, that is the deep sea uh, fishes. They are of typical uh, colors uh, due to their habitat. Uh, which makes them unpopular among the consumers due to lack of awareness. So uh, in India, except uh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala, the deep sea fishes are not consumed and preferred. So the exploitation of the deep sea resources is on the back foot as its market acceptability is a grappling problem. So uh, many of uh, many are of the view that there is no demand for the deep sea resources due to their appearance, texture and unfamiliar taste of the meat. Secondly, we can talk about the technology gap for exploitation. Uh, here, the identification of suitable and productive fishing ground is a need of the heart for better economic viable fishing. Next one we can uh, say about uh, the lack of uh, value addition technology. Uh, there is a huge gap in the technological expertise and uh, further standardization of the uh, developed technology by these institutes. So, um, therefore, these technologies need to be standardized at the earliest for ensuring that the value addition process is successful and more importantly, uh, suiting to the industry for commercial production at a minimum cost. And next challenge is the national security. After the, <coughs> sorry, after the Mumbai terror attack uh, during 2008, uh, the security concerns of the country have been a million dollar challenge to the security forces and the union government. So this issue needs adequate deliberation and it should be addressed by developing or inducting a uh, deep sea fishing fleet. And next uh, challenge is the sustainability. Uh, it is necessary that the deep sea fishing vessel operating in high sea, they comply with the contact for the responsible fisheries and other national and international obligations. Moreover, the sectoral disputes, they raise a serious concern to the deep sea sector as operation is intended to be a sustainable one and uh, we can talk about the infrastructure uh, facility uh, the infrastructure uh, facility like uh, standard uh, board building yards for construction of new boats and repair of the existing crafts uh, exclusive fishing harbor landing center processing plant ice plant, uh, drinking water facilities, uh, marketplace, they pose a huge challenge for the sector and fisheries. But it is not a nightmare for the government to set up the infrastructures as it is going to pay back with foreign exchange. And uh, lastly, we can uh, talk about the compliance of the international guidelines. These international guidelines and codes are mostly voluntary and it is more of an instrument of reference to help the states in formulating and also implementing the appropriate measures for the management of deep sea fisheries in the high seas. So, this also gives a way to develop and strengthen the applicable legal and institutional framework the world over. Therefore, it becomes mandatory for the nation to comply all these guidelines. So uh, students, with this, we have come to an end of the session where we had a discussion on the Indian uh, deep sea fisheries. We have uh, talked about the forecast and the challenges. Hope you like the session. Uh, thank you. And um, I'd be very happy if you could uh, subscribe my channel.